In this video, I'm gonna go over 10 things that I would do differently in my cargo trailer conversion. This is my five by eight cargo trailer that I converted to be the ultimate off-road, off-grid overland camper. So without delay, let's get right into it. So the first thing I'd probably do differently is buy a slightly larger trailer. This is a five by eight trailer. And I think if I were to do it again, I would go with a five by 10. Now my goal with this trailer wasn't luxury and comfort. So I opted to choose one of the smaller trailers to build because I didn't want the size of the trailer to limit my mobility in the back country. That being said, I think if I chose a five by 10 trailer, one that is slightly longer, I would have a more enjoyable interior space. The thing is, is I bought this trailer secondhand. So in the end, I had a limit of what I could work with, but I think if I waited a bit longer, that five by 10 probably would have came up for sale. Having that extra foot would make this a little bit less awkward because I only have a foot here. It's not quite enough to stand in in front of the door when the door is closed. If I were to do this again, that would probably be the first thing that I would do differently is just choose a slightly larger trailer. Now, the other thing I would probably do differently is choose a different wall finish. This is just a thin pre-finished panel board that I use on the walls. And really I chose this material because it was cost effective. You know, these four by eight sheets, I think were $38 each. With the price of wood right now, I really had to be wary of my, you know, material cost. Um, the thing I don't like about it is that because it is very thin and flimsy, you know, you can kind of push on the wall and you know there's some give and the issue is too that i installed my strapping at every two feet on center i could have put the strapping at every 16 inches on center and that would avoid this issue here where you know it just kind of feels a little cheap and i think i should have just opted for a slightly thicker material because you're working with such a small space the thickness of every material you choose to use really greatly impacts the interior space that being said if i were to do it again i'd probably choose something slightly more durable and a little bit thicker just so that you know i had some peace of mind about not bumping into the wall and you know puncturing it or something while we're looking at the walls you can see i have two exposed openings here these holes this would be the third thing i would do differently and this is more or less my fault based on this trailer design is that i custom fabricated fenders because i upgraded the wheels we ended up having to install a plate on the inside to support the upper half of the fender and uh, because i already had the walls finished obviously that meant i had to cut open a hole it's not the end of the world i'll just have to make up a cover plate which i have yet to do this could have simply been avoided if i had just installed the fenders before i finished my walls the fourth thing I would do differently is how I built this shelf. It's just a very simple piece of plywood and I was kind of rushing this last little detail here. And I have a light installed underneath. And this shelf and light works perfectly, you know, to work at night. But I think I should have built something almost more of a basket design. And uh, that is the fourth thing I would have done differently. The other thing I would do differently is how I built these legs. They're again, slightly on the flimsier side. And they're just, you know, some solid wood oak that I fastened together to make these legs. I really don't like the hardware that I use. It's just simple hinges. They're not heavy duty and they kind of flop around. And when you put the bed down, you kind of have to rely on your eye judgment to make sure that the legs are in place. I'd rather build something a little bit sturdier and something that locks into place in 90 degrees. While we're looking at the bed, the other thing I would have done differently is this mattress choice. This is just a three inch memory foam mattress topper that I bought from Amazon. It looks great and I simply made my own sleeve for it with some old sheets. But the thing is is that there's barely any support. As you can see, there's a lot of give. You know, sitting at it or laying down on this for a long period of time, you can actually feel the plywood underneath. So if I were to do it differently, I would have chose something a little bit denser, something with some more support. The other consideration and thing I should have done differently is the height of the bed. As you can see, I gave myself about 14 inches from floor to underside here, and I could have just given myself a couple more inches so that I can fit my cooler underneath properly. So another thing I would have done differently is how I designed this table. I'm happy with the dimensions and where it is and everything. The height is very comfortable. The only problem is that this fold down supporting leg gets in your way if you try to get up from the table while you're sitting. It's fine when you don't have anything on the table because you can just lift the table and fold the leg out of the way. 
but obviously if you have stuff on the table you kind of have to either hold it or to move it out of the way hold it and lift it up or you know kind of shimmy shimmy your way out and it's just it's just not ideal so one thing i could just do differently is mount this leg slightly asymmetrical you know not in center so that when it's down i still have enough room to move my leg and get out get up from the table. And that's that's really something that I didn't really consider until I started using it. So another thing I would do differently is how I designed this control panel. I'm really happy with the layout and everything is really nice and accessible. The only thing is that there's lights that stay on all the time. You know, this display for the heater, if I have them running the heater, is always on. This battery monitor, if there's a draw, the light's on. And this glow green light here is always on. If I'm running the inverter, there's a green blinking light. You know, that's fine during the day, whatnot, you don't really notice it, but at night it's very distracting and really illuminates the space. My solution right now has just been covering it with a piece of tape. What I would have done differently is simply just build a cover plate or almost like a sliding panel that I could use just to hide this at night. You know when you don't need these displays to be on. In the same sense, this USB 12 volt power outlet has lights that are always on and it's fine you know, if you don't have anything plugged in because you have the cover plate to block it, but usually you're charging your phone at night and so this light illuminates the space, makes it a little bit of annoying to sleep at night. Again, I just would have wired it in a way so that the light doesn't come on. And so here's the control center, the back of house, the guts of my trailer, of my off-grid electrical system. And let's talk about the last thing that I would change and do differently. So the last thing I would have done differently on my cargo trailer camper conversion, or really just my off-grid electrical design, is the battery selection. I absolutely love this battery, I have no complaints. This is a 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery by CanBat. This battery weighs 26 pounds and has been exceeding my expectations. The only problem, and this is Achilles heel for all lithium batteries across the board, is that in cold temperatures below zero degrees Celsius, you cannot charge them. The battery monitor will turn off and cut power from coming into the battery to protect itself. I already knew this going in, and so my philosophy or thinking behind trying to charge the battery in the winter time is that I would run my heater for you know an extended period of time, to get the space up to temperature and then I can begin charging the battery. And that, that has been working. You know, I haven't had any, I don't really have any complaints with that. You know, I have to run the heater for let's say 30 minutes and then I can start charging my battery and you know, I can make up that difference. And it, it's been absolutely fine. But I think if I were to do it again, I would have paid the extra $400 or whatever it is to buy CanBat's cold rated lithium iron phosphate battery. And the difference between a regular lithium iron phosphate battery and a cold rated one is that they have a built-in heating element to keep the battery temperature from going below zero degrees celsius so that you can add a charge to it when you know the ambient temperature is colder than that the problem is with a lot of these is that that heater will be continuously running you know if it detects that the temperature is below zero and so over time you know you would eventually run out of juice and your battery would go flat what makes CanBat's cold rated battery actually stand out is that the heater doesn't run continuously. The battery monitor will actually detect once the battery is hooked up to a charger and then will turn on the heater and the heater will only pull power from the charger and then once the battery temperature sensor detects that the battery is above zero degrees Celsius it will then allow charge to come into the battery. That is a total game changer because it makes total sense because you don't need the heater in the battery to be on all the time. Especially if you're like me and you're not using this every single day, you know, you don't want to worry about your battery going dead, you know, in the middle of winter. While we're on this topic, CanBat has actually reached out to me and I'm now a part of their affiliate program and I have a very exciting offer. I can give you guys a 5% discount on purchase of any kind of battery, doesn't matter what. This company is awesome to deal with. With the sale of a purchase, I get 5% commission and that helps fund future projects. And supports the channel and so you know at no extra cost to you it's a win-win situation 
reach out to them. They have 24 seven customer and technical support. They're happy to answer any questions and they offer free shipping across the United States and Canada on any battery. I can't express again how good this company was to deal with. Every time I had a question and pick up the phone, you know, within a couple minutes, I was on the phone talking to a knowledgeable person that, you know, was able to answer my questions. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Some of these things are a little subjective and opinionated and they're strictly based on my own experience from building my own cargo camper conversion. And these are lessons that I hope you can use to inform your design and build. And I just want to stress that I didn't start making videos and do this project to make money on YouTube or any of that. Um, and so being a part of this affiliate program is really just an exciting offer to be able to monetize you guys and give you a discount on a great product that I fully stand behind and you know I take this very seriously and so um, if you're in the market for a battery doesn't matter what kind just take a look at CanBat I you know that's all I'm gonna say I have a link in the description and uh, yeah I hope you enjoyed the video thanks for watching